Morning. Before I go on to uh, what I'm going to have a go at, uh, I made a couple of alterations on this one I did yesterday. I really, I don't, I don't like the, well, I've done the trousers here, but it's too late to change that. But I changed the dog. The dog looks as if he was going that way, where the man was going that way. So I just changed that. Um, the things you can do on this quality paper, like arches, are oh, shit. Um, the, the dry brush and, and, and the movement of paint, it's very, very forgiving. You can do a lot with it, uh, which you can't do on the cheaper Fabriano, which is underneath here. Um, so I'll put that aside. So there's a dog I've changed. I've just altered the shape of that jacket. But the, the big mistake I made on this was put the shadows that way. But they should have been that way, and I should have done the light there and the dark there, because the tree lights were on the, the right. Look. But anyway, that's a minor thing. It's a sort of a teaching thing anyway. I don't, I don't pretend to paint masterpieces. That comes later. Uh, right, I'm, I'm going back to my palette, my, my old palette and with the hake. And I'm going to do a sort of a lakey sort of picture. It's something quite simple. I'm, my time is a bit limited today. Um, I've added uh, this... Uh, Hooker's Green. I, when I buy some more or make another paint tool, I'm going to to get some artist quality of that. It's a bit weak. Uh, I don't know whether that is because it's being manufactured in France or, or the French owner. I, I don't know. I haven't used it, apart from this last month, I haven't used Hooker's Green for years and I did have some, uh, some left over in, in a small tube of artist quality and it is very, very strong where this isn't. Uh, also, um, I, I will consider using probably Windsor Blue. I've got some artist quality Windsor Blue. It's in my little paint box. So, uh, right, a swig of tea. Hake, prime with water. Cheaper Fabriano, £130. Cold pressed. Just give it a wet. I'm going to start thinking about putting more buildings in than just trees and skies. I've been looking at uh, Steve Hall's uh, mostly time lapse or uh, and short trailers for his videos, his vlogging videos. But he's a superb uh, copier of, uh, well, not copy, he didn't copy, but. In the style of Ron Ranson, uh, not Ron Ranson, um, I'll change that, hey, guess. No. Um, Edward Wesson. Now, Edward Wesson's reputation seems to be growing the longer he's been dead, and he died in 1983. And uh, the master, master watercolour paint. He did paint in oils, but his, he will always be known for his totally original watercolours. Some have likened him to Edward Seago, who, who came before him, but, but, but no, Wesson is, is a unique painter, as was Seago. But when we learn to paint, we work from the work of others. Of course we do, that's how we learn, that's how they learn. You see students in galleries uh, with their easels all set up, with a jugget on the floor so they don't get paint on the nice polished wood. Uh, all working for the masters. It's something we share, we pass on, and we learn, I mean, why reinvent the, the wheel? Everything you need to know has already been done, really. And you just do your bit of it. Right, let's put a sky, sky in, a bit of, bit of back with the, with the raw sienna. We'll just, I won't put it too strong. Just, just dog it about. That's dried quite quickly. It's, we had a lot of rain overnight, but it's still pretty warm. Glad to save that time. Right, let's have some, uh, oh, I need a cloth. Let's put a bit of cloth by the side of me. Make sure we're recording. Right, a bit, bit of ultramarine. Quite 
quite strong. And a bit of bit of uh, light red. Give a bit of a grainy cloud. I don't know, I like that. Remember these paint, paints, the paints all dry lighter than you put them on by quite a considerable amount. Okay, a bit of cloud hanging over London. <coughs> I've got the board at about 30 degrees, which is a, sort of an ideal angle. Let's give a clip again. Keeps it nice and flat. And I think when you're painting water, make the, the bottom dark or darker because you're looking down and it reflects what's above rather than there. That's not being reflected there. The overhead sky is, so we just... Okay, that's it. I'll give that a dry. Now I quite like that sky. Now, take your headphones off. Well, not your headphones, but so mute your sound. Now. So we fixed the sky, that's not going to get much lighter than that now. And uh, I might put some rocks in there. But I want to put in a, a background, so a bit of sky colour. some nice darks in there now. If you're painting onto wet you need thick thicker paint and pull out rogue hairs. Just try to keep the hairs and the brush together. A bit like the hair, hair cut I gave myself on Saturday. Well, they're dark as well. And I'll put it, well, I've got some green mixed in with that. Oh well, never mind, that'll do. No, I'm not sure that I've got the right hake here. Eventually, the hakes do uh, split, and you, some that will be on redemption. Right, let's get, let's, oh, let's put, use a bit of that green. And, Bit of the uh, ultramarine. Okay, so that's a that's a nice bit of distance there. No, I'm going to get rid of that hate. I've got a new one ready to go, as and when the one I was using packs up. Well, I want a bit of dark along that horizon. I think when you're new to the hake, 
controlling the amount of water that's on it is, is quite a challenge. Right, okay, now I'm going to put in some few rocks in the foreground, I think. Nice warm colours. Bit of sienna and some blue, bit of red. And what I'm going to do is scrape, scrape out, so I want some plenty of colour in there. darker stuff in there. Okay, now while well, that just dries a little bit, I had a bit of clear up and a throw out of a lot of brushes yesterday to give me some more room on my table. It's still cluttered, but I'm going to get rid of a lot of brushes. But I, I gathered up my bits of plastic. Look, all bits of plastic, loads of them, and, and when I'm Usually painting, do you think I could find one of them? Not a chance. So, uh, right, uh, let's just scrape off the light off the top. Easier than painting, and we can do a sort of a reflection in there. And the same here. Very difficult to do this on a rough paper. Right, okay, I can add a little bit of shadow to that and a bit of reflection at the bottom. So, uh, I'm going to want to get that more horizontal. So, my standard burnt sienna and ultramarine that'll do let's uh, get a bit, a bit of dark use a little bit of green good reason for putting these darker trees in is that you can lift out some knots, some sails and a little bit of interest to, to connect the background to the foreground. Okay, I like that. I quite. Right, that'll do. Uh, Right, I, I won't, I'll leave that nice and light, it's got a bit of sienna on it, but I'll, I'll dry brush some ripples later, but I want to put in some some islands or some headlands coming across, uh, so let's use a bit of sienna and a bit of light red. Bit of sienna, isn't it? Burnt sienna. I've got three palettes now. I've got my, I've got this one. I've got one with uh, the, uh, I think the winds of blue on, and, and the, and the, uh, the green, and yellow ochre. And I, can, I go between the, the three of them now. And my metal Dana Rowney lovely box that is. Right, we want some let's put a bit of Payne's grey. Just to darken up some of that. I'll darken up a lot of it actually because I want to put some rocks in here.
Ouais. God, just lift out some. Okay, so that's that side. They're all very simple. So I should lift out good. Okay. Uh, well, that's drying off. I'll go over here. I'll put some some a bit of a greeny, bluey, dark. I'm using more colour. It just gives a little bit of extra width to the painting as in the screen, I must say. All right, let's get a bit darker. All right, just a bit of dry brush on here. Dark, so a bit of let's try a bit of, bit of the uh, paint's grey in there. Okay, <coughs> I'm a rest. I'm quite pleased with that. I'll just bring the, ca bring the camera in a little bit so you can see more of the painting and less better angle. Right, T. This is still a very limited palette, but I, I want I want to put some uh, shadow and reflection on those. These here, these rocks, so I'm going to use just some blue and some red. A bit of grey, just to help things on. Raining again. Right. Quite like that. I'll just lift out some of this with my finger now. And we'll put in a, a larger version of the same thing. So I'll clean the brush. Some more cloth, excuse me. Oh, a nice big wedge there, let's get that dry. And that over there. See, our friend Stephen Cronin hasn't been very busy again, he must be on holiday. If you're interested in hate painting, have a, have a look at Stephen if you don't already. I know most of you do. He's uh, very entertaining, very good. Keeps on track, he keeps to the point. I don't, I drift. I tell little anecdotes. Okay, all right, let's uh, go over here and do a bit of. A 
Print your color. Boom. Bit unrealistic, isn't it? Good mix is uh, lime red and and uh, paints grey. Haven't used very much paints grey in the when I've been using my my squirrel mops, of which I have three. Uh, three then. I might do a bit of detail with them later when we progress with this. I love it, we're making it up as we go along. Most of my views don't exist, I think you have said that many times, but they don't. They're based on ideas or they're based on reference material, but the actual view is often a composite from various sources. Right, now I want to get, I want this to come out much further, this, this idea here. I like those colours, a bit of Blue, bit of bit of hooker's green and a bit of sienna. Oh, let's just get that up here. I've got a bit of what's underneath. It just gives a range, a greater range to your greens by using by using this this green because oh yes, it's not the only green. You can use sap green, olive green. But I want that nice and dark now. Oh. Plenty of blue. Oh. Well, that's what the height can do. Look, but, but I want to get some good little dark in there. I just want to get that darker than the background if possible. And I reckon we can put a couple of little men on here. We'll uh, use some, what Edward Weston called his, his ninth colour, filth, his palette grey. Okay, we'll pretend there's water in there. Oh, lovely blue, look. That's lovely. Let's put a bit on the other side as well. Yum, yum. We just put a little few ripples in here. All uh, right, uh, some bluey things around there. I've got more detail to put in. I just want to just get. My paint is almost dry now. Right, I'm going to put in a little bit of dry brush now because that's pretty. I'll dry it, but I want to just dry brush some some ripples across here. 
So take your headphones off. Just take off the moisture there. Yeah. The blue. And with the corner of the brush on the back, just right, no more than that. If I did any more, I'd ruin it. But now we're going to detail it. Now I'm going to use my new number six lovely squirrel hair mop, Pro Art Renaissance, superb brush that is. It's got a point on it, par excellence. I usually uh, keep it nice and shapely in my mouth. I don't think there's any arsenic in uh, cotton, cotton and water colours. Right, um, I'm going to just do some some little bits of trunk using filth oh, it's got such a gorgeous little point I like to put a bit of burnt sienna with my darks especially burnt sienna and ultramarine gives you black if you use it strongly enough but it'd be better if you were using artist quality because of the saturation. Oh, my wrist clicks then. We don't want a lot, we just want a suggestion. Not enough water on the brush. It will all sort of gravitate to the tip. Alright, that's about it. A couple up the top here. Just very gently put them in. It's all just about hair. A screw hair. Right, okay. Let's add some fine ripples with this lovely brush. This one was £18. Okay, let's put some little men in. They don't want to be big because the, these trees aren't very big. But we'll put them in, in red, or one in, in red. I think he's got a bit of right. We'll just bring him straight. Bit of a thick fishing rod. I just add a little, just a little bit of detail. I'll do another one, but I'll do darker here. I 
Okay, there's a little bloke caught in his boat. You wouldn't see much of a reflection of him, but we'll put something in there. Right, now a little bit of rigger work. Get some detail on it in the foreground. So just a black and, oh, paint's grey. Or burnt sienna and ultramarine. Oh, just a little bit of a... Nothing much, just just honestly with using the edge of the, the brush, just put a bit of texture in. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna do much more than that, a couple of birds. Oh, sorry, but I've got to lift out a little bit. A little bit of a uh, sail. Right, now a bit of tissue. I know this is right in my comfort zone doing this sort of stuff, but I think if you can't do it because you're new to this, it's difficult enough to to work all this out and practice. You say practice. Well, I've got a nice little sail there. Just adds a little bit, somewhere to rest your eye. We could using a bit of uh, filth, just put in a. Okay, I'm going to let that go. I'll quite be with that. I'm going to. Put it in a mount to find some masking, see? Just to hold it on the board. And I think maybe the, uh, the light coloured mount on that one, because it's quite a delicate picture. Make sure your horizon is horizon. Does it go up here a bit? Uh, well, there we are. So, so we've got a, a Lakeland scene, a good scene again. I never tire of doing them. They are a lot of fun. And, and this type of sky, you just can't get that any other way, I don't think. It's wet in wet, it, unpredictable, done very, very quickly, left some sparkle accidentally. But it looks realistic. That doesn't know that heavy cloud there should be underneath. But that's that's just the luck of the draw, really. Oh, I have to tilt that a little bit so it's a bit darker. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. I won't zoom in. It looks better from a distance. See you later. Bye bye.